Hey everybody, welcome to my butt. Today we're doing the archery video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the basics of archery. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and say this right now. This is how I do it, not how everyone does it. There's lots of different ways to do this, and some of them are fundamentally incorrect, but a lot of them are perfectly fine to use. So I'm going to try and talk about some of the things that are incorrect so that we can avoid them and then you can build your own system around that. So you may have noticed that I've switched off of my longbow and onto this. This is a takedown recurve bow. Uh, I only shoot traditional bows. So uh, takedown recurves, self recurves, flat bows, long bows. I'm not a big fan of flat bows to be perfectly honest, but there you go. Anyways. This is what a lot of people are going to be shooting on, so this is what I'm going to uh, demonstrate on. I'll shoot the English in a minute. The first thing you want to do is check all of your clothing and equipment and make sure there's nothing that's going to be in the way. So, you know, the bottoms of my pants aren't super tight. Uh, I can feel my toes inside my boots. I get full range of motion out of my jerkin. It's comfy. I'm not, you know, overheating, although I probably look like I am. I can move my arms, move my legs, things like that. Make sure that uh, if you're wearing like an ELB glove like I'm wearing, it's not on too tight. Uh, making sure that uh, if you're using a shooting glove that it's, you know, the right size for you. So, you know, making sure that just everything fits. Uh, also make sure you don't have anything that uh, could be in the way. For example, I'm wearing my archer's axe. Probably not the best thing to be wearing when I'm shooting archery, so I am going to move it. So now we're going to square up on the line. I'm going to go ahead and set my feet. I like to have mine about the width of my shoulders. Bend my knees a little bit, make sure I feel comfy. I like to have my right foot a little bit uh, in front of me when I shoot. So uh, instead of perfectly square, I'm usually a little bit twisted. Uh, I can't remember if this is the open or closed side, but some people shoot this way. Some people even shoot this way, although that hurts my back. Next up, we're going to check our hand position. And this is where a lot of people have a lot of trouble. Your hand position on the bow should not be like this. You do not want to be gripping the bow. Hold your hand flat like this, and make sure that you can bend your elbow this way. If you're this way, you're not gonna have a good time. Hold your hand flat, and rest the bow between your thumb and forefinger. Now, take your fingers and close them so that you're pushing the bow into the palm of your hand. This is a bow grip. If you hold your hands this way, your elbow is going to stick in and be struck by the bowstring when it comes back. If you are getting hit up here, it is because your hand position is bad. If you are getting touched down here, your hand position is good. Although if you're getting hit really hard, your hand position is also probably bad. That's why archer's guards are down here and not up here. Now we're going to knock an arrow. Draw one from your quiver. I'm using a hip quiver. Some people like a back quiver. I don't. Actually, greatly dislike one. And I'm going to demonstrate a technique called the hunter's knock. A lot of people, they want to take the arrow from up here, lay it all the way over the bow, sight how they clip it, and load it. For me, my knocking process starts at the quiver. I'm going to grab an arrow, and when I do, I'm going to grab it by the knock, and I'm going to feel for the ridge. This ridge, I can feel with my thumb, and it indicates my odd arrow. Some of you may have noticed my arrow feathers are all the same color. I take my thumb, I feel for that little ridge, I'm going to push the, uh, the arrow between the bow and the string right over the arrow rest. 
Show it again from this side. Between the bow and the bowstring, right over the arrow rest. Then pull back and clip. You don't have to hold the arrow rest out. Mine tends to fall if you don't. At speed, the hunter's knock looks like that. It's faster and more efficient, and it doesn't involve you having to wave your arrows around in weird ways, so it's also a little bit more space efficient. Anyways, next up, we're going to go ahead and prepare to draw the bow. Hopefully you haven't changed your stance. You don't want to do that, unless you have to. If extenuating circumstances have happened and you need to move your stance, that's okay. But before you draw the arrow back, check it one more time. It's a good habit to get into, especially considering turning to grab your arrow may cause you to shift your foot. Now we're ready to actually shoot the arrow. On your bowstring, there's a little metal clip called knock. My bow is set up with an under knock. So, I clip my arrows under my knock. I'm going to take three fingers and put them underneath the arrow. A lot of people like to shoot one over and two under, or one over and one under when they shoot. This can create unnecessary drag from the knock of the arrow where your fingers are touching it. It's not that big of a deal. A lot of people get really upset about it. It's not that big of a deal. I find that starting out, people do better a little bit when they shoot three under. Let's talk about the position of my hand on the bowstring. On my glove, you can see, kind of, where the string normally rides. It is just in front of my knuckle. Actually, I'm going to take my glove off and show you what that looks like without my glove so that you guys get a pretty good feel for what this looks like. So, my knuckle of my first finger is keeping the arrow pressed up against the knock. Not hard, just lightly. My fingers are right here on the string. They are not excessively curled, and I'm not way back here on my second knuckles. That makes it harder to hold the arrow onto the string, and but also, when you let go, the bowstring will roll, giving the arrow a slight curve that you don't want when you're trying to target shoot or hunt. Now that we have our hands on the bow and the bowstring correctly, we're going to go ahead and draw the arrow back to our anchor point. This anchor point is very important because it ensures that you bring the arrow back to the same distance every time. Not doing that will affect how far your arrow flies, and by extension, how up and down on the target it is. For me, my anchor point is to take my index finger to the corner of my mouth. That looks like this. By setting my finger right here, I can ensure that I bring the arrow back the same distance every time, and I can see with my right eye down the arrow, allowing me to actually aim a bit before I shoot. Once the string is all the way back, you want to simply let go. Don't pluck or pull at the string, as you'll throw the arrow offline. Instead, once the string is all the way back, simply let go. All the way from the bottom at a relaxed speed, this looks like this. I'm gonna go ahead and ensure that my feet are exactly how I want them. Load my arrow, pull, aim, and let go. At full speed, it looks like this. And that's my full shot sequence. Hopefully this works for you. Let's go over a couple other things about shooting a different style of bow, in this case, an English longbow. This is a Bickerstaff bow that I had made for me. It's from Sheffield, England, and uh, it is a lemon wood belly. I think a hickory back, not sure, but it has a purple heart core. It is, all the stats are on it, 
The draw weight is 50 pounds at 28 inches, which is the standard for measuring. You always measure at 28 inches unless there's extenuating circumstances. And the bow length is 74 and 3 quarter inches, so it's a bit big. On the side right here, it has a horn overlay or inset. That is to stop the arrows from chewing up the wood there. Although my varnish is worn a little tiny bit, I should probably get it redone. Uh, mine is knocked. It has a standard Flemish twist bowstring, which you can see up to here. You can see the, the actual twists and the lay-in, which is up here. It is laid in on both sides, which is why you don't see knots on either end. And it has horn knocks, a walking knock on the bottom, which is small and rounded, and a loading knock on the top, which is a bit longer, a bit more decorative, and has two notches, one for the stringer and one for the actual string. This bow fires a little differently, although I'm still going to load it the same way. For this type of bow, you definitely want to be wearing some kind of bow hand protection. In this case, I have my English longbow glove. This not only protects my forearm from string slap, but also the top of my hand right here. They make separate shooting gloves that just protect right here, and sometimes go over one finger in the event that you like to shoot off your finger. I don't, so this is what I use. The setup for this bow is pretty similar, except your hand position, you have to be sure that your hand is lined up right here so that when you load your arrow, it will sit in the correct place. The salvage protection on my string is also a little bit narrower than on my other one, and these arrows sometimes have a tendency to fall off. Because of that, whenever I clip my arrow in, I make extra sure to get my hand on it pretty quickly. Apart from that, this bow shoots pretty much the same. Except that it shoots a lot harder. The other thing to know about an English longbow is that because it is quite a bit off of center shot, uh, meaning that the arrow rides along the outside edge of the bow instead of very close to the center of the bow, my recurve has a cutout that allows it to be very close to center shot, the arrow is actually going to fire left of center. Understanding that, will help you get closer to the center. Now I'm just gonna show off a little bit. I'm gonna shoot six arrows into the target. Right now I'm at 10 yards. Oops, nobody saw that. Wish I could stop right there. I pulled that last one a little bit. I did not get my fingers all the way over the bowstring. And uh, because of that, I pulled the bow down a little bit when I let go, causing my shot to go a little high. For funsies, let's see if I could get a better sit. That's a yes. All right, that about wraps it up. Thanks for checking out this video. Sorry it's late and we will see you next time. Thanks for coming to check our videos out. For those of you who don't know, an archery range is actually called a butt, which is where the joke at the very beginning comes from. I didn't just say, welcome to my butt for no reason. Now that a lot of things in my life are taken care of, videos should start coming back out on a regular schedule. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.